Hello everyone and welcome back to Level Headed Mind, where we aim to empower you to make sound decisions about your mental health care needs. In this video, we will review the therapies that are recommended as first line treatment for depression. In our last video, we discussed the medications that are used as first line treatment. So if you missed that video, we will link it in the description, so be sure to check it out. As mentioned in that video, psychotherapies are first choice when treating depression in children. Both cognitive behavioral therapy and interpersonal psychotherapy are the top two therapies that are recommended as first-line treatment for depression in both children and adults. However, for adult patients with depression, it will be up to you to decide after speaking with your provider if you'd like to start with either of these therapies, medications, or both. For children and adolescents with depression, it is best to start with therapy before going to a medication. So let's get into these therapies and see how they work. Starting with Cognitive Behavioral Therapy, or CBT. The basic concept of CBT is based on the fact that depression is caused by cognitive distortions and learned patterns of thinking, which are seen as errors in thinking. CBT is known for the behavioral triangle, where what you think affects how you feel and how you feel affects how you behave and vice versa. For instance, negative thoughts create negative feelings which lead to negative behaviors. And with CBT, we aim to transform those negative thoughts into positive ones which will create positive feelings and positive behaviors. Therapists help the patient to recognize their negative distortions and help them to reframe their thinking or conclusion of themselves or the environment into a more positive one. For example, a common distortion is overgeneralizing, where a person may think that nothing ever goes right for me, something bad is always bound to happen to me. This pattern of thinking it may have stemmed from childhood or other experiences in life when they made mistakes and were punished or from verbal or physical abuse or other traumas where the mistakes or errors became the focus of the person's thinking. The person may even feel that they are to blame, which may lead to guilt, shame, and low self-esteem, which are where the symptoms of depression begin to manifest. And they see the world through a pessimistic lens. The therapist will politely challenge the negative thinking and, for example, ask the person, how did you arrive here to your appointment on time? Did you get lost? Did you get into an accident? Well, the answers to these questions will most likely be no, which challenge the idea that bad things always happen to me. Then the therapist can challenge the overgeneralization further by asking the patient to discuss positive things that have happened in that person's life, such as getting a job, getting a raise, graduating from school, having a child, and things like that. This will negate the distorted thought that something bad will always happen to me. In CBT, the patient is also given homework. For example, tracking thinking patterns in an automatic thought record where they identify a troubling situation, the emotion or emotions that result, and the thoughts that accompany the situation. The therapist will look for patterns and help the patient to clarify and develop more rational responses. And these rational responses are then rehearsed until the positive thinking patterns become the normal responses to difficult situations. Positive coping skills are also introduced to help the patient stop poor coping strategies such as drinking alcohol, self-harm, or isolating from others. Positive coping strategies which are commonly used include things like meditation, guided imagery, mindfulness, and deep breathing exercises, yoga, and things like that. 
The treatment plan is individualized for each person and session lengths will vary typically one to two sessions per week for eight to 16 weeks. The next therapy we will discuss is interpersonal psychotherapy or IPT. IPT is a time-focused therapy of 12 to 16 weekly sessions that center on the patient's outside environment and relationships in the here and now. IPT focuses on relational stressors or interpersonal problems such as interpersonal disputes or issues with spouses, children, or coworkers, or role transitions such as job loss, divorce, or entering into retirement, also grief or loss of a loved one, or interpersonal deficits such as social isolation, shame, or guilt. The goal of IPT is to treat three primary areas of depression to remit symptoms and improve functioning. And those three areas are symptoms, where we look at how symptoms like depressive affect, apathy, and loss of pleasure are affecting the patient personally and their relations with others. Number two is social interactions or how depression is affecting the way a person interacts with others compared to the way they used to interact. And personality or how the depression is affecting their character traits, such as having a pessimistic view on life or poor self-esteem, guilt, or poor communication with others. The therapist helps the patient focus on the social aspects of their life and how negative thoughts and feelings affect their relationships. For example, instead of focusing on the thought and feeling of not being good enough, as in CBT, the focus is on the outcome of those thoughts and feelings, such as the interpersonal deficit of social isolation. So, when the therapist helps the patient put those feelings in the context of how the person relates with others, a patient may discover that when they feel they're not good enough, they withdraw from promotions at work, decline social activities, or take a passive role in a relationship with a significant other, all of which can lead to feelings of loneliness, guilt, shame, and depression causing a person to withdraw and isolate. The therapist works on helping the patient discover a new self-view and a new approach to interacting with others to develop feelings of self-acceptance and positive self-esteem. The therapist may even role-play social interactions with the patient to help boost their confidence and then challenge them to use the new social interactions in the real world. Helping the patient troubleshoot or address which areas to focus on will help them to regain control of their interpersonal relationships, social interactions, and negate those depressive feelings. So both IPT and CBT have been clinically researched and shown to be effective treatments for depression. But keep in mind, when dealing with children and adolescents, Oftentimes, there is a family therapy component to the treatment plan as family relations play a major role in the mental health of children. Other therapies have also shown some efficacy such as problem-solving therapy, behavioral activation, mindfulness-based CBT, and many others. However, the most robust research is in favor of both CBT and IPT, and it will be up to you and the provider to decide what treatment would be best for you. And remember that the success of therapy is based on the fact that the therapist and patient have a therapeutic relationship, and not all therapists will be right for every person. So it is up to you, the patient, to speak up. If you and your therapist are not jiving, then switch therapist and don't worry. This is common practice and completely okay. The therapist will understand. And one of the biggest mistakes people make in therapy is sticking with the therapist that is not a good match just because they feel that they may hurt the therapist's feelings. So remember, 
You are in the driver's seat when it comes to making decisions about your mental health care and treatment. And it's up to you to decide which treatments, therapists, and providers are the best fit for you. If you have any questions or want to share your experiences with either of these therapies, then please share them with us in the comment section below. We'd love to hear about it. And if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're not already, subscribe to the channel and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next one. Thanks for watching.